KBS EFM's 11th anniversary special, Live Love Life in Korea. Coming to you on 101.3 in Seoul and surrounding areas, my name is Nasi Yan. And my name is Alex Sigurds, your co-host for our special two-hour long program, again marking the 11th anniversary of the launch of TBS EFM. That's right, hard to believe, but TBS EFM was first launched on December 1st, 2008. And for the past 11 years, the station has not only grown, it's become a staple of English broadcasting here in Seoul and Korea. Absolutely. TBS EFM is a great source of English radio for Koreans. But remember, we have so many expats living here in this great nation, over 2 million. And they are able to find out about Korea, listen to great music, talk, but everything. So we want to take this opportunity to thank all of our listeners and for tuning into TBS EFM throughout the past 11 years. We hope you'll be with us for many more to come and especially over the next two hours as we bring you TBS EFM's 11th anniversary special, Live, Love, Life in Korea. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to TBS EFM's 11th anniversary special, Live, Love, Life in Korea. My name is Nasim Yan. And my name is Alex. It's so good to be here with everyone today. Especially, I'm excited to do this together. This Me is the first time really doing first this. First time. As two co-hosts. Well, well, Alex, you mentioned earlier that uh, we've got more than 2 million foreigners here in it's Korea. It's an amazing number to think about. Right. I feel like just a drop in the pan. Like, I'm nothing. No, There's but you <laughs> are one of those millions, right? It's, it's an amazing transformation that's happened. Mm -hmm. The increase in number of foreigners, not just in numbers, but in the influence that they've had in Korean society, but also around the world. Hmm. How long have you been here, Alex? <sighs> it's been a decade. Decade. It's been a decade Almost this year. Almost as long as TBS EFM then. I just, I just missed the start. I was <laughs> just a year behind. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been with TBS for half of that time, which has been nice as well. But 10 years in Korea, and uh, don't really look to go home anytime soon. Well, I don't know if you planned on staying here that long because we've heard a lot of our expats who came here for maybe a month or so or six months and then they end up staying for a year, two, ten years, etc. They, they seem to find a comfort zone here in the country and we're seeing a lot of more international marriages happening here in the country as well. But the funny thing is, as I meet more and more foreigners through the show, etc., a lot of these foreigners are more, quote, Korean than some of my Korean-Korean <laughs> right. Korean friends. That, that is a fact. Uh, I am one of those foreigners. I was supposed to leave after a year. Mm -hmm. Here I am, 10 years later. And sure enough, you start picking up on these, these skills, whether it's just being able to eat <coughs> Korean food or use chopsticks well. You just feel like, oh, I, I'm kind of getting it, right? It's a good thing that we're starting to accept Korean culture as foreigners, but also spread that as well. So, you know, K-pop, of course, has a huge role in spreading Korean culture, but expats here are doing the same things in their own ways. Right. They're also becoming sort of ambassadors of Korea. That's right. Which is why our TBS EFM's 11th anniversary special, Live, Love, Life in Korea, we're going to be inviting four expats who are living in Korea and are also spreading Korean culture in their own different ways. That's right. We have a, a rapper, musician, a cartoonist, a businessman and an honorary citizen of Korea as well. All right, we're going to find out how they are helping to spread Korean culture throughout the world. And we have a very special musical performance from an expat music group called the Blue Wine oh, Jazz Band. Looking forward to that one. <laughs> right, so we've got a lot of exciting things to look forward to over the next two hours. So keep it locked on, TBS EFM 101.3. And we're now joined by four expats from different corners of the world. They've been making an impact in spreading Korean culture. Welcome to the program, everyone. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Thank you so much. <laughs> four different expats representing four different countries and doing four very different things here in Korea. So why don't we go ahead and just have yourselves introduce who you are and where you're from very quickly, starting from our right. Uh, my name is Nicola Kwon. I am Australian. I'm a cartoonist and artist, and my husband is Korean. So that's the big reason why I'm, why I'm in Korea. Okay, and Kwon? Hi everyone, my name is Kwon Nguyen. I'm Vietnamese American, and I've been living in Seoul for the past six years, <laughs> approaching seven next year. I currently run a company called Say Speaking, and we provide one-on-one -on -one online tutoring globally to Korean learners all around the world. 
All right, and uh, Tatiana. Hello, everyone. I'm Tatiana Mardari from Moldova, and currently I am on my PhD program, and also I'm doing some activities of foreigners, tourist role actor, and many volunteering ac volunteering activities as well. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Oh, uh, hi. My name is Logan, and I am currently a little bit under the weather, so this is uh, my radio voice. But I've been in Korea this time. I've been here about three weeks. I'm currently doing music and also YouTube. Sounds like you have a great voice, even when you have a cold right. throat. Right, makes it makes it better to get a deeper voice. Yes. It gives it more <laughs> Very feeling throaty. to it. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, would you like to share maybe about how you came to Korea? I mean, we have a, someone from Alabama, someone from Moldova. Maybe you want to share how you got here in the first place. Logan, yeah, yeah sure. Start? So, um, originally, I worked for an American airline, and so working there, the pay wasn't great, but we got tickets for free. So actually, I wanted to go to Asia, and Japanese and Chinese was a little bit too hard to learn. In Korea, the alphabet is so easy. I was like, I just learned that and came to Korea and fell in love. Wow, that is, wow. that is a really cool. I've never heard that before. It's just it, it makes sense though because as a foreigner learning Korean, it, the le, the letters, you know, the lettering, the Hangul itself was the easiest part of the language. There's no doubt about it. Right. So I can I can relate. Right, yeah. After learning that, I mean, I still didn't know what anybody was saying, but at least I could read menus and order food. So. I guess the hunger, the Korean alphabet itself, is quite easy to learn. And um, you had some exposure to Korea back home, home as well? I guess that's why. Um, I did, a little bit. Yeah. When I was in uh, junior high, the Korean car company right. came and set up a factory in my town, so a lot of Koreans moved in, and there was a lot of Korean restaurants and stuff like that. So. Well, to come to the show, and welcome to Korea. And Tanya? In my case, my passion for languages uh, brought me here because that time I was speaking four languages and Korean became my fifth language to learn. And uh, Korean was different from European languages, so I really wanted to learn something different. And it was challenging, yes, I admit this, but it, it was worth. I, I really like it, this challenge. You just, just five languages? Just stopped yes. at five? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would you have more languages than five now? <laughs> right now, I have five. Only yeah, I know five, five but, but, but I understand many others, uh, although I've That's never amazing. studied them, really. Well, thank you so much. Kwan, what brought you here? Yeah, very similar story to Tatiana. I love learning languages as well, and I actually wanted to learn my mother tongue. I grew up in Vietnam, um, grew, grew up in uh, the States, but my family's Vietnamese, and I wanted to continue learning Vietnamese to improve. Um, but then somewhere in the middle, I switched, and I wanted a different challenge because I realized that I want to go abroad as well. Um, and when they canceled my Vietnamese um, language exchange program, I switched to Korean. And then, you know, here, here we go, it's history. How fortuitous, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's what happened. I came here on exchange about um, almost nine years ago, yeah. and then fell in love with the country, decided to come back. That's amazing. And Nicola, you fell in love too, right? Yeah, I fell in <laughs> love with the Korean man, but in Australia and uh, after we were engaged, I started thinking about maybe we should move to Korea. Having an intercultural relationship, you know, my husband was very used to the Australian side of things, but I hadn't lived in Korea, so I thought really um, as a good way to, you know, have a very uh, fulfilling relationship, I need to understand what it's like to live in Korea. So that was a big reason why we came here, and uh, we haven't gone back to Australia. <laughs> I'm wondering, Quan, um, as you mentioned, you're a Vietnamese-American, you wanted to learn Vietnamese first, and that is how you began, and then you said you kind of switched from Vietnamese to Korean, but I mean, why Korean? And now you're, you have a business teaching Korean to other foreigners, so how did that kind of come out? What was the switching point? Yeah, it's very tough to, like, when you're in the moment, you don't think about that, and then you look back nine years later, and you're like, okay, the, the dots connect. I I've always been surrounded by Korean all my life. I remember even when I was a little kid, my mom was obsessed with B, P, and she would watch- We're talking about blood. rain, right? Rain, not, right? Not blood. Not blood, <laughs> no, no, B, no. The artist B, rain. B, yeah, B rain, uh -huh. right? And um, the show Wait, was- your um, mom? Your mom was obsessed with him? Well, she oh, would I watch the really drama. Okay. She, she would watch the Full House. Yes. And that was oh, one of the yeah. very first. It was on video cassette, and I saw that. Growing up, I didn't know it was Korean, and you know, n near our neighborhood, we have a supermarket, and she always would get um, the pear, uh -huh. the Korean pear, Korean like pears. buckets of pears, and she would <laughs> feed us. Um, it was just so tasty, better than American pears. So I had that already exposure yeah. growing up, and when I went to college, all my friends would go to the karaoke, but we only go to Korean karaoke bars. We wouldn't go into Chinatown, we would go to like the Hanintown. 
um, and then they would sing K-pop songs, dance, um, and then that was really when it clicked. I, I realized, oh, wow, this is really fascinating. It's very similar to Vietnamese culture, but also it's, it's something so unique, and I just wanted to learn more about it, and it convinced me to go to the country and to really take a year and learn the language and meet the people. Right, so take a year, and now, nine years later, you are helping run a company. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? How does the program work? And especially, I'm interested, how you got the name Say? Yeah, so this was co-founded by me and another friend, um, Youngmin. Um, and at first, we started as just a team of two. Now we have three co-founders, but the mission behind it was actually to connect students at his university, it's an American university, um, with lots of students there that wanted to learn Korean, but they lack access to native speakers. Because um, as you know, in class, we do a lot of memorization and grammar, and there's not a lot of speaking. So we wanted something more based on real life experiences and having an actual tutor. So we connected the students with our teachers from a senior center. So that's really the reason why we started. We wanted to help also the other side, these retirees that wanted to connect with the youth. And hence, we created Say Seniors and Youth. We wanted to create this bridge between the cultures and the generations through a language that they both love. Very clever. Yeah. Yeah. So how many students and how many sort of teachers do you have right now? Right now, we have over 30,000 students around the oh. world. Oh. Um, and for us, it's been really a journey because we started with just 10 pairs. And when we worked together with um, our teachers in the center, and their students. And over five years later, we see the company grow and we have now students in America, in the States, I'm oh, sorry, just, okay. I'm putting my English, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> in Canada, um, in Korea as well. Right. Um, and it's been something that we've been really proud of because for us, our focus is really to help students communicate. It's not just to learn the language, but to use it in real life and speak with their loved ones, um, with their friends and family. Um, even at work and just feeling the confidence to communicate. So I guess that real boom in interest in Hallyu, Korean culture, that's also extended to the Korean language as well. So, so it's been good for your business, Kwan, huh? It's been very great. I think the, time, <laughs> the timing was good. I, I guess, can't complain about right that. Right time, right place. Mm -hmm. I wonder how it was for the other guests in learning Korean. I mean, Logan, you said you were attracted to it because it seemed easier than maybe Chinese or Japanese. Was it really that easy? It seemed easy at first. At least the alphabet, the alphabet easy. seems easy, yeah, right? Yeah, it lures you in. Yeah, but after that, it's not compared to you know, non-Asian languages. It's still a bit tough for me too. Yeah. So. Well, my Korean is still not very good. Um, I sacrificed a lot of my Korean so my husband could have good English for his business. So he owes me. Uh. <laughs> uh, but our son is two years old, and he's well bilingual he's learning words from both languages but as he's learning I'm learning some the special especially um animal noises you know I'm really good at that now <laughs> like shark no I my Korean pronunciation improved when I started reading to my son Korean books as well uh, I started reading to him when I had him in Germany so after three month three years in Germany my Korean friends were saying your Koreans improved after living in Germany and <laughs> hardly meeting any Koreans there. Oh. So that is a great way to improve the language. Yeah, we've also got Tatiana. You are an honorary citizen of Seoul. Ooh. Is that correct? Oh, uh, yes. What does uh, that mean? Yes, uh, this year I was the lucky one to be honored with this award, honorary, Seoul Honorary Citizenship. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is provided by uh, Seoul Metropolitan Government and um, it, many foreigners, for example, this year, 18 foreigners from 14 made about the foreigners during these years. Did you sort of register yourself for this, or how, how does this process work? Yeah, well, uh, yes, we have a process, like application process, and of course you have to follow some requirements. One of the basic requirements is residence. Uh, you should live in Seoul more than three years consecutively. Okay, check. What else, what else do I need <laughs> yes. to do? Right, you too. first, <laughs> second, uh, take a note. Yes. Uh, the second one will be you have to get the public trust. So that oh. means uh, the head of the organization, some public organization or uh, nonprofit organization will sign the recommendation for you. Uh -huh. So it's not that simple. Well, please get my documents. Right. I will I've apply been here for, for three years. Yeah. yeah, I've been here. Yes, yeah. I did many things, but 
Who can certify that? Uh, you really need. I'm just yeah. like, yeah, just give me the trust, website public name public trust. and public yes. trust. Or, or it can be 30 Koreans that can sign for you. Just 30. Okay, so just in our 30. audience right now, we have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> and, oh. But the third, I think, is the most important one. All right, one. I got this. The third one is contribution to the to community, to <laughs> the community of Seoul. If it's in Seoul, it will be the community of Seoul. So your contribution can be from different areas. For example, Example: Social, economical, political, welfare. It, it it's up to you. Okay, mm -hmm. definitely not economical. I'll work on the rest of that. <laughs> yes, please work. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's why we hear of these other honorary citizens, like the famous names like Gus Hiddink, oh, of yeah. course, yes. the coach, the Dutch coach who helped Korea into the semifinals of the yes. 2002 World Cup. Um, some other famous names. Oh like, yeah, Jackie Chan. Yes. Who is a yeah? It's, you are in the same level as. Jackie exactly. Chan, who is a huge fan of Korean culture himself, and for what I know, spoke a little bit of Korean too, because yep. he came He's here so to be often. A big fan. Right. Right. And so, also, oh, Michael Sandel. Really, we talked a lot about oh. Michael Sandel and the justice with my professor at the university. So he's really famous. Did you get was, to meet the other on it? Oh, like I Sandel? wish I could. <laughs> I really wish to meet him in person. Uh, yeah, really amazing people. Right. They call this prize. And I saw also a familiar name too, Mr. Thomas Bach, who <gasps> is of course the president of the International Olympic Committee. I guess yes. after the Pyeongchang Olympic Games, he was awarded that as well. Wow. Very, very honorable. Yes, I'm really honored. To no, be we, we are honored to have you here. <laughs> thank you, you, guys. you are at that level and uh, thank you. I am not. <laughs> so. Thank you. I am not. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm kind of curious, Tanya. What? How did you contribute then? What led to your becoming the first honorary citizen from Moldova? For everyone, that's not impossible. It's really possible. Do what you do the best. You need to find your own area of expertise and just work hard. For me, it's teaching. I love teaching. It doesn't matter teaching kids. Uh, teaching the seniors at the welfare center, uh, teaching the kids in the uh, child care centers, uh, doing a lot of volunteering, or um, spread the culture and uh, Korean history to the world. That's simple things that everyone can do, but for me, that's my area of expertise. So I try yeah. to contribute to the community, to the Seoul community in my own way. So I think you have your so own way as well. Can I, can I nominate someone? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I have nominated no, someone. Well, I was you? thinking though, because we okay, were just talking about you. someone who's me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I wasn't fishing Alex? for that one. No, but I was just thinking someone who contributes and someone who mm -hmm. really gives a lot to society and bridges cultural and generational gaps. We were just talking to Quan a little bit. Are you an honorary citizen yet? I never ever knew about the process. <laughs> it was just oh. kind of like something Wait, that I've seen my friends on, on Facebook and I'm posted, so happy right? like oh wow you're awesome like you deserve it but I would never think to consider even like getting nominated or applying because it seems so out of reach but you went through the list right you've been here for more than three years <laughs> no Jack. I have no idea how it works either it's more you get like some tips I will from provide you the details don't worry yeah. please hook me up because you're contributing to not only spreading Korean language and Korean culture, but also the Korean economy. And kind of makes me wonder, how difficult was it to set up a new business here in Korea as a foreigner? Were you able to find a lot of help, etc.? Definitely there are resources, but as a foreigner you also have to consider the legality because you're not a Korean citizen and you right. have to have a Korean partner. So that's the not fun stuff. You have to have a Korean partner. Well, it's going to help a lot Okay. because of paperwork and just a lot of other things that you probably will not be aware of until you actually get yourself too deep into the water. <coughs> so I think it's really important, anyone starting a business, to have a local partner, um, but also to have experience enough. Well, for my case, I'm running a startup. I started my business when I was 22. So it was at a moment where I was really learning a lot and learning as I go, but the startup community is very helpful and they're also so generous with time and networking and resources especially the government as well, for people that are looking to make Korea their home base as the hub to get into the other countries in Asia. The Korean government has a startup competition year-round, um, every year actually, and then they select about 80 top teams around the world to go to Pangyong, and that's where they incubate and they help provide the resources to foreigners learning Korean. Sorry, foreigner. I got this. I work here long-term. 
um, because, of course, you know, Korea has 5G, really great broadband, and just really great resources to build um, your product and reach a very receptive audience because Korean people are also very in tune with the latest trends. We um, love to be trendy. Yes, yeah, the exactly. The front of the trends, yeah. Exactly. So that's why if you have an idea, if you want to go into business, Korea is a great place. It is just the fact that it has the environment to really grow your business. That's the great point. But you have to come in ready to know that there are also just legal challenges, visa stuff, those things that are, makes it more complicated. Right. I, I just can't get over the fact that you said you started it when you were 22. <laughs> You're 22. Yeah, so, I'm 27 now, so it's been five years. Wow, You're so still so young. <laughs> yeah, I feel old. <laughs> uh, but I think that's actually an amazing, you know, it's, it's a testament to kind of the resources that are available. Not saying that you weren't a capable 22-year-old, but to do that in a, in a foreign country with uh, kind of the activities and sort of the resources that you used, it kind of makes me think that maybe not anyone can do it, but it's just definitely more accessible and reachable for a foreigner to start a business and, and really get into it. So it's very impressive, and, and I wish you luck in your candidacy for Seoul Honorary yeah, Citizen. Thank you. I'll apply right now. <laughs> <laughs> kind of curious, though. How did you come up with the idea of uh, this platform? Was it the platform that came to you first, or was it uh, you saw this burgeoning right. need for Korean? What came first, kind of? Uh, it's really tough because I can't really take credit for this because my co-founder really came up with the yes, idea. Yes, you can. He's not here. Or she's <laughs> Sorry, here. No, all mine. <laughs> You're safe. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think definitely it is part of my love for learning languages. And Korea is just one of those languages that I have unexpectedly fallen in love with because I never knew. I really want to learn French. French because it's very similar in terms of like It is a beautiful language too. Romantic, yes. you know. But somehow, you know, things happen in your life that you can't predict. And um, when this fell into my lab, I realized that what a great problem to solve. I think the first thing I realized is as a Korean learner myself, I wanted a, something, a solution. I've tried books, I've tried language exchange, I've tried pretty much everything on the map. But nothing really worked as well as having this accessible platform that can connect me to a teacher and focus on speaking. So we created that solution ourselves. And over time, we saw that it resonated with other students. And then because I saw that this was also helping other people, I became even more committed to this. And then you just go from there. You build up. And, um, and then you realize that also is this, this global trend of K-pop and how do you and how it's impacting so many people around the world. That just made me think even bigger and dream bigger. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so you're talking about yeah. really spreading Korean, Korean culture, <laughs> Korean language to foreigners and I think that's amazing on the other side over here we have the foreign tourist role actor right. Tatiana you are helping Koreans learn how to spread foreign culture to Korean culture to other foreigners right oh yes that's right uh, the foreign tourist role actor actually provides me the opportunity to um, act act really acting as a tourist right acting as a tourist but it's not just simple acting as a tourist but in a very creative way i have to uh, ask also kids questions but of course not just simple what is this building but tell me more what's the story behind the building they should know korean history and uh, just to make sure they understand sometimes i bring with me different kinds of stuff for example this is a comb so if we talk about comb pattern pottery they don't know what is a comb they can confuse it like with a brush or something mm -hmm. else and it's like oh what is this oh it's a comb pattern pottery it's a comb comb first okay then what's this, this design it's a comb design so then what about the neolithical period and the the representative pottery in that period oh, oh yes oh. this oh. is our comb pattern pottery so wow. it's really amazing because they, uh, I'm creating even this way, they understand what they are talking to and they are willing to explain more about that. that, that yeah, you, you've sold the comb to me. That's a very <laughs> impressive comb, thank you. But you, so you get to actually reach out to them and, and yes. kind of be a teacher. You're not just an actor, you are a teacher for them. Yes, we of course we know the uh, the content, we know the cultural uh, the uh, the cultural explanation behind our beliefs. Uh, we know the history, Korean history, but they also know much more than that. 
we have to open this box, you know, it's like a, a box and they uh, they start start talking and they, if they have to talk in English because they will be our future guys. I think this is why I mentioned that some of the foreigners who have made Korea their home yes. are more Korean sometimes yeah, than the Korean Koreans themselves. You have more of an interest and you're constantly learning and also helping to spread that as well. So we heard a little bit more in depth from Tanya and Kwan and we're going to talk a little bit more with Nicola and Logan when we come back, but that will be part two. That's right. So we're going to go into our artist part right after this, but first, a band that actually has also helped spread Korean culture, very popular, doing success, successful right now in all areas. Let's close up part one with a song by Blackpink. This is Kill This Love. Call me. I'm back. Yo. When we inside, ready, fully done. Butter some good, you done your jug of pitch. We am, we am, butter bite, got a yawn. They boom their gum, a junior jug of pitch. I'm Uri, not owner, sit at the Hadu. Nerd, nerd, sing a cane on Kamaduji. Dot and Yaja, they're not weak, Kamadu. Rapper to the time, hot to yeah, hey, hey, Justin Bieber moving, touch it and take it, man. None of my rapper to the time, hot to yeah, hey, hey, check, well, he's hot, just look at they kept their hands, son. Cause you got my nine guy, that's how they get by the side, side, uh, no move, pop, yeah, what's up, we each other's hand, fun, fun, no more time, love, wow, we up, keep up, cheap, and I ain't got time, it's on my legs, I'm with a luggage, you went to the garden. I was wrong, and not at all. Chincha one is not real love. Chincha one is not real dog. I would sit up, I'm a dog. No matter, get it or not, and then you look at someone and bomber. Good as a name when you bag it, huh? You don't name most of her body, none. Tina go ship was a body. Fuck a chip of a sergeant. So I can message you to buck a name. You don't want to touch it, I got it. Why am I like this? I think I do it in an aging. How you can know when I'm matching? Do it all fucking into the same money, all the butter, you don't got it. You my boo boo, I'ma go cut that noo noo. Probably better, yeah.